Let's take what we talked about, those hard learned lessons that you had going back to 1982, even 71, uh, and apply them to today. You've written a recent post about a pivotal year on the brink, 2024. Take us through your analysis there. There were many things that surprised me in my life that wouldn't have surprised me if I had studied the history, because they didn't happen in my lifetime, but they happened many times before. So I created a need, really, to when certain things are coming along that I'm not used to seeing, to then go back. And there are five things that are now the big forces that interact together, and I can li list those things, but we're on the brink, and it becomes also somewhat of a definitive year because of we're going to find out how we are with each other politically, and we're going to find out geopolitically a lot. A definitive year, but not the only one. Neil Ferguson of the Hoover Institution, for example, says that 2024 stands out compared with the last 30 or 40 years, but not compared to some of what came before. And so when we come to, let's say, this election period, how will we get through that and how will we work together in an effective way? How well we can be together and that well, how well we would be together, not only the conflict, but how effective can we be? We're going to find that out over the next year. What we need, I think, is a strong middle. We have to be, do this together with a strong middle and a bipartisan. In my opinion, almost uh, the president of the United States should have a bipartisan cabinet. In other words, draw the best and bring it together so that there's a bipartisanship, so we're not going to harm each other, and then uh, almost do a Manhattan Project-like uh, convention of thinking about how we do an engineering so that we raise productivity levels and, in a broad-based way and that we create um, equal opportunity and strive for equal opportunity. Man's inventiveness and new technologies that they create is, a, is the fifth force. And that force is now more powerful than it has really uh, been before. It's a new um, industrial age. But even the promise of technology takes us back to the geopolitical risk Ray Dalio is concerned about, particularly as Neil Ferguson points out, given the central role of Taiwan in the production of the chips needed for AI. Even before a shot was fired, the news that there was a Taiwan crisis would cause, I think, major economic uh, disruption. What is the role of the individual decision maker in that world? You always have to view the individual within the context of the circumstances they face. A different type of individual is required for different types of circumstances in history. And you always have to look at the long term versus the short term. Because over the short term, you're going to have these big swings and so on. But over the longer term, if a swing goes too far in one direction, there's going to be the necessity, the compelling, obvious necessity to go in the other direction. Uh, go back to 1982. If you had it to do over again, would you rather be Ray Dalio starting out in 1982 or Ray Dalio starting out in 2024? Oh. 82, before 82. I think life, this is life. Life is a journey in which you really don't know anything. You have intrinsic your nature and you have your pull to something and you go after it. And then it's the power of mistakes and learning from mistakes. I have um, a principle, pain plus reflection equals progress. It's like a video game. You have your goals and then you make your mistakes and then you figure you have your learning and it gives you learning points and then you keep going on that. That journey, including the mistakes, would be, is so much better than to have the, ah, I got it right, I know everything right, and there's no such adventure, no such journey. No, I'd much rather have start out and have that journey.